Hey everyone, this is a tutorial on how to solve this cube ultimate, but it can also be helpful for other cube puzzles where the center orientation matters. I'll be showing a walkthrough solve using the beginner's cube method, and I've got some timestamps in the description below. This puzzle has just corners and centers. So the centers are the larger pieces that resemble ladybugs, and the corners are the three colored pieces just on the outsides. So if this is the center, if I were to do an algorithm, for example, sledgehammer, which is what we'll be using a lot, it would just look like this. If I have the center here, And just as a heads up, this color scheme is not the same as a regular Megaminx, so be sure you keep that in mind if you are trying to find a certain piece. Okay, so let's go ahead and scramble this puzzle. Okay, that looks pretty scrambled, so let's get started. Um, for this tutorial, I'm just going to be starting... Um, starting the solve on the Methods logo center, just for ease of demonstration. So what I want to do is find the corner pieces that would go around this center. So on this side, I'd be looking for corner pieces that have yellow, such as this one. And on this side, I'll be looking for pieces that have dark blue. So right away, I see this yellow corner. I'll just maneuver this in. And then we should put it up and it lines up. So now since this side is blue we need to find the two corners that have the darker blue. Okay here's one. This one's lucky we can just put it right into place. Oh never mind no we can't. So we have to rotate this one as well. Rotate the corner. And luckily, that one just magically popped into place as we were placing this corner. But just in case, for some reason, you're trying to um, put in the last corner, I'll just show you a quick example of what you can do. So here's what happens when you have three corners that are in place and just one that's been rotated. So what you want to do is move this corner under one of the other corners. And since we know that this part needs to be up here, the yellow that we're looking for is facing to the right. So we want to rotate this whole piece to the left, the opposite. So now this corner is under that corner, and then we can just rotate the actual corner itself. So use this as the pivot point instead of moving like that. Now use this whole corner to turn around itself. And now we can put in this corner that we just spun around. And we should also be able to put in that blue one. And here's just a mirrored case where we again have the three corners that are already in place and one more but it's facing the wrong way. This time our target color was blue, so here it is. This time the blue is facing to the left, so we want to move this corner under the right corner. Okay, now it's under that corner. We just want to rotate, not like this, but as the pivot point. Now we can put up the corner that we just rotated and replace the other one. Okay, once the first side is solved, what you need to do is go to the other side of that center, so the opposite, and we need to be solving for these remaining corners, one, two, three, four. So in order to tell which way your corners need to be oriented, you need to know what center goes here, which is a little bit less obvious. So I can just tell you as a shortcut, because I always solve on the method side, I know that the opposite uh, center is always going to be 
this one, the light blue, purple, white, and gold. But just in case you are not using this exact same puzzle, there is a way where you can kind of trace your way up to what the center should be, and therefore it tells you what your corners need to be. So with the completed side facing down, find one of the two centers where that ladybug center is facing up. So like this one, not side to side like that. So you've got, oh, it's even red too, how great. Okay, so we have the ladybug center, it's facing up. All we have to do is sort of trace the colors. So we have the yellow connected to the yellow, obviously. We have this lime green. So if this is that same sort of Mega Mink side, this big sticker should also be lime green. And if that is lime green, this one should also be lime green. And oh look, there is a lime green sticker right here. So we know this sticker is not facing, or this entire corner is not facing the correct direction. It should be rotated one like that, so that the light blue is up here. Well, that's great, because now, since we have the light blue, we're imagining that it's facing up here, because the lime green is here, because we already did all of that. We know that this whole big piece should be light blue. And just because of how the puzzle is put together, we know that each center is only going to have one big piece that is a certain color. And here it is. So if we know that this is light blue, that's obviously white. So we know the other centers that we need to be looking for, uh, or the other stickers, we need to try and find the white stickers. So here, here, and here. Okay, so it looks like I have the one case. I'll have a picture of what it would look like on a normal cube, But we have the one case where we've got one corner facing up, one corner kind of to the side, one facing up, and then one kind of to the side. Anyway, just like a normal cube, we just have this center forward. So we have the one corner that should be facing up. We have it facing us, which means that the other corner that also should have been facing up, but it's not, it's facing off to the left. And then here's where the algorithm comes in. I'll just have it right up here. Uh, right prime, or R prime, L, R, and then L prime. So now the case that we have should be headlights, if I did this correctly. So now it looks like instead of having the blues up here like they would ideally be, it looks like they're kind of facing down. And then we have the other corners, instead of this white facing up here and this white facing up here, they're kind of facing out. So that's exactly like this other case. So now we just do the exact same algorithm, but with our headlights facing to the right, just like on a regular cube. And now all of your corners should be solved. Now, in order to bring this center, because that's the one we need, up here, we just put it in the back. And then do that same algorithm, but you need to do it twice. So halfway, turn it 180 degrees with the Mefferts center still facing down. And then do it again. But oh no, we've got it in the right place, but it's been flipped. Okay, here's the interesting thing that you don't usually see on normal cubes, is that when you do the sledgehammer algorithms, it will move the centers counterclockwise. So here's what you can do when you've got a center that just needs to be flipped. Put this back on the top, and look around the unsolved centers. Just find anyone where the ladybug is facing up. Now, um, just do the algorithm so that we replace this back one because this is also the back one is also going to be facing up We just will swap this center and then the one way back here Now 
now you will be able to put in the center again and since we know that the center is turning counterclockwise we know that the white is going to end up down here so we put this in the back do the algorithm halfway there turn it around Okay, so now we want to hold the puzzle so that the centers that we just solved here and here are on our sides. It doesn't really matter which way. So I happen to get the case where none of these centers are lining up. So you might have this case or you might have when you've got one center, you might be lucky enough to have all four, which would be insane, or you might have two. So here's when we have none. All we want to do is keep doing that algorithm, but this time we keep in mind that whatever center we have on the bottom will not move. So when we do this algorithm, we will have the center that is front facing us. It will go directly to the back. And then the other two centers, so here's the back and the top, they will just fill forward like that. But they will also rotate counterclockwise according to you. So for instance, this one would move counterclockwise, so the green would be facing down. Oh, you can also do the opposite of this algorithm, where instead of starting with right down, you can do left down. So I can just show that really quickly, and then what that will do is move the pieces clockwise. So I want this one to fill forward and move clockwise, because then that red will rotate to meet the red over here. Halfway there, we just want to rotate the whole puzzle. So now that red should be all lined up, and it is, which is good. So now, for the remainder, we just want to keep this on the bottom and make sure we've got our original two centers on the sides. It doesn't really matter which way. And then just keep doing that algorithm just to kind of experiment and see where the pieces go. Okay, so we're going to send this piece to the back because it'll come all the way over here and it'll meet here. So when this piece goes all the way to the back, it will end up going counterclockwise twice, which is good because then this teal, instead of being on the bottom, the teal will now be on the top to match these. And now the puzzle is solved, but you might not have gotten the pieces to move that nicely. You might actually, if you have two centers, you will have a parity. So when we have our original centers on our left and right, we can see that this is in the right spot, it's just flipped the wrong way, this is in the right spot, it's just flipped the wrong way, and you'll definitely know that you have a parity if you've got these two centers that are solved and then the other two that don't look right. So you can either have the two centers that are solved be adjacent, or they can be on the opposite. So now we have the solved corners, or the solved centers opposite, and then the two weird ones also opposite. So if you had the first case where you had the adjacent corners, just sit tight for a second, because I'm going to do an algorithm that will place the pieces into the adjacent parity. So what you want to do here is always have our original corners on left and right. We just want to do that same algorithm, but we'll end up doing it twice. So again, it doesn't matter how you're holding it as long as your original centers are on left and right. We'll just do the algorithm. And that was only halfway. So now freeze, make sure you don't turn it again. You just do the same thing. So now we should have the adjacent corners, or the adjac adjacent centers. So now what you want to do is place one of the centers, it doesn't matter which one, on the bottom. So this one's front, so it could be like that, or it could be like that, it really doesn't matter. So you've got that bottom, that front.
and that's only halfway, so freeze. Now just do the algorithm again. And that should solve the puzzle. Alright, hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I try to be pretty good about responding to questions within a day or so. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, this should be helpful for other Skube shape mods like the Skube Extreme or the Twisty Skube. And this is the first Skube shape mod I've ever solved, and I have to say, it's a really fun puzzle. I definitely recommend finding one of these. Uh, I just found this at a local store, but I'm sure you can get it online if you can't find it around town. I really enjoy this puzzle, so definitely pick one of these up. I'm going to have a puzzle spotlight video, which is a little bit of a series that I started recently, where I just, it's not really a review, it's not really an unboxing, I just like to show some of the puzzles that I have and talk a little bit about them. Um, so be looking for that video. Again, I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and uh, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.